Hello, in this tutorial I will show you how to paint this old American barn. This painting was done on a 12 inch by 16 inch stretched canvas with acrylic paints. You'll most likely want to use the traceable and that can be found on my website. There are two sheets to this traceable. There is a top sheet and a bottom sheet. So when you apply your graphite paper, you'll have both of the standard size computer sheets printed out, the top and the bottom, and you'll place them onto the canvas so that they are on the far left. Now this design can also work on an 11 inch by 14 inch canvas. You would just um, make it um, a little higher up and you would have less sky on the top so um, and you might have a little bit more space on the right okay so I am going to start tracing my barn with a regular pencil and I'm just tracing over the traceable and with the graphite paper and the drawing is transferring to the canvas I am tracing over all the lines that are on the traceable, including all the lines that are on the flag. I found that super helpful when it was time to paint all those stripes in to have kind of a guideline of your stripes. Okay, so as far as the colors go, we're going to start with primary blue and titanium white. So those are loaded on my paper plate palette. And I'm going to also use a three quarter inch flat brush, also known as a bright or a wash. Just um, the size, the width of the bristles are three quarter inch. And I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna start by dipping my brush in the water and patting it dry. So I don't want it dripping wet, but I'm not um, leaving it dry either. So I'm gonna dip it in the primary blue and start at the very top, we're painting the sky. We're painting the entire blue area of the painting first. And instead of going uh, with these left and right strokes, I'm going, I'm flip-flopping my brush. So um, kind of cross-hatching strokes going in sort of an X formation. And that's gonna really help with blending that widen that we're gonna do here. So I'm flip-flopping my brush and I'm gonna grab white without rinsing my brush and without adding water to the brush either. I just grab the white and I'm gonna flip flop my brush some more and that is going to get that sky to be uh, that light blue, bright blue sky color that we really want in this painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend that white up into the blue. Ideally, I want that very, very top of the painting to be the darker sort of blue and it's gonna blend down and I'm gonna gradually add more white to the canvas as I go down. And also, since we're going around this barn, you want to use the tip of your brush to kind of cut that shape in so you can get as close as possible to that bar and you see me I loaded more blue on my brush so that I can blend that blue back up there a little bit more but as I'm working down the closer you get to the horizon the lighter you want this blue to be so to get it to be lighter you're going to add more white to your brush and of course use the tip of your brush to make sure that shape of the barn does not disappear we drew it with the pencil, graphite paper, and it came out kind of light. We don't want to lose it with that blue sky. Okay, so I'm about halfway down the canvas now, and I am continuing to load my brush with just mostly white right now. And there's obviously still blue on my brush, so it's turning into a, a light blue. And I go back up and kind of blend it some more by doing that flip-flop sort of um, stroke. I call them X strokes because you're kind of um, making an X shape when you're painting and it blends the colors together. And this is nice when we do skies because um, it kind of helps with the clouds when we go do clouds at the very end of this painting, I do the clouds. So you kind of have a, an indication of some very light um, clouds in the sky already with that white. Okay, so I am 
very close to that horizon line now and I want to make sure that this is the lightest part of the sky so I want to add mostly white down here and obviously it's not going to be pure white it's going to be a very light blue and then I'm going back up to kind of blend it in and then you have um, an opportunity to paint the sides here so if you're using a stretched canvas that has the sides you can use up the paint that's on your palette and mine kind of fast forwarded there so you can press pause right now as you paint your sides but i am going to move ahead and do the barn colors so the barn is next and i used burnt sienna titanium white and mars black and i also used the three quarter inch flat brush and you see me grabbing a chunk of that titanium white so instead of reloading it i just grabbed the chunk that was left over from the sky obviously not the one with the blue in it and i'm going to triple load my brush so i dipped it in the white first and I dipped the corners in um, Burnt Sienna and Mars Black. And actually, I didn't really dip the corner in Burnt Sienna. I just grabbed kind of a glob of it. And um, the corner was dipped in Mars Black. So my brush is triple loaded with about mostly white, um, a medium amount of Burnt Sienna, and just a little bit of black. And so I'm going to paint up and down. And um, this, if you have followed some of my other stuff, I do this when I do any kind of wood background, but the barn is uh, the wood, so this is kind of the same sort of thing. Um, the colors are gonna blend together and uh, form this wooden color, and you see me outlining the roof there, so you kinda wanna do that too. We did that with the sky, but you wanna do that with the brown too, using the tip of your brush, okay? And, I am basically painting up and down strokes everywhere. I'm kind of um, skipping around there and kind of outlining some of the main features, making sure that flag area doesn't disappear. So I kind of outlined the flag area and because I don't want to go back and redraw, redraw that again. But as I go to reload the brush, I'm loading it in different amounts of the burnt sienna and the white. You just want to be really careful not to use too much black because that black will take over very fast and it will make the barn very dark. Now my barn ended up kind of um, dark, um, but if you used a little more black than what I did, it would be very, very dark. So as you go to reload you kind of want to decide and kind of calibrate how it's looking as these colors are blending together um maybe you like a more grayish look of your of the barn so add white and um also so you see me switching to the 12 flat and that is a smaller flat brush to get into these smaller areas so basically the ultimate goal here is to do these up and down strokes with the triple load, not letting those colors blend all together to one solid color. Because if I keep painting over the same thing over and over again, it's gonna all eventually be this one solid color of very dark brown. And we don't want that, we want it to look like a wooden barn so we want to leave these colors unmixed together so they're kind of streaky and you see streaks of white in some places and streaks of black in other places and i'm outlining the roof here again with um, mars black and um, using the tip of my brush okay because that's um the that outline part of the roof is a uh, black okay so I did that and I'm going into the areas that are still white and I'm filling it in with the same technique okay you want to make sure you stay vertical with your strokes you don't want to change the direction even though right here it's kind of um, diagonal under the roof we still want to stay as vertical as possible and um, if you're having a hard time staying vertical um, use the side of your canvas as a reference so um, if you're kind of thinking oh my strokes are going crooked now look at the side of your canvas because that's that the edge of your canvas is 
is vertical and you can use that as a reference point to what vertical is. You could also take a t-square ruler and kind of um, use that to kind of calibrate your strokes but try to keep them as vertical as possible. Okay and I'm filling it in and um, so it's going over some areas that have already been painted. Okay just keep in mind not to use too much black. Try not to over blend it in and I was mentioning earlier if you like a more grayish looking barn add more white and less brown or if you like the look of the reddish brown you can do more of the burnt sienna and less of the white. I kind of did a, an even amount of white and burnt sienna and then just a few strokes of the black here and there. Okay, so make sure that you don't paint over the flag area and the window area. Make sure you don't paint over. There's a black window that's going to be at the top, so I'm painting around that area too. Okay. So, and I'm using the tip of my brush to outline that window to go make sure that it's nice and um, a nice sharp line there. Okay, I had a little bit more dark at the top of the roof. I did that on purpose. So the top of the roof that's kind of under the, the, the triangle, the 45 degree angle at the very top above the window, I purposely made that slightly darker. Okay, and then, so I'm going around this window, making sure that I don't lose the shape of that rectangle and that rectangle will, will be painted in black later. Switched back to my three quarter flat just to add a few more coats of this up and down sort of thing to make sure it's all filled in. And then we will go back in a later step to add a, uh, another layer of white lines. So keep in mind that the, it may look really dark now but it's gonna lighten up in a little bit when we do these white strokes in a later step. Okay, and then we have the area of the sunflower. So that sunflower was drawn in and I wanna do my best to go around those petals. I mean, you can certainly paint over them if, and then um, paint your sunflower over the bar and you'll have to white your sunflower out first with titanium white so that the yellow will show up against the barn or you can just do the best you can to paint around it. Okay, so that's what I did. I painted around those petals. And then of course there's an area that's under the flag that I have not painted in yet. So I'm using the 12 flat because it's a smaller area. Okay, and we have the area under the flag. And I'm going to use the tip of my brush to make sure that I um, get that shape cut in nice and, sh and um, straight. And I believe that bottom of the flag is pretty horizontal when I drew it. I think I kind of um, didn't make it perfectly horizontal, assuming the flag was kind of flowy, um, that it was hanging on the barn and it's not exactly... Um, it wasn't full of starch. It wasn't a stiff leg. It wanted it to be kind of flowy. Okay, so now I'm doing the roof. So the thing with the roof is we're going at an angle now. And I'm using slightly more black because it's a darker area. Still the same technique. I'm still dipping it in those three colors, but I'm adding a little bit more black to it so that that black will be darker than the barn. So it's essentially a very, very dark brown right now, even though it looks black, okay? And the direction needs to go in the angle of the roof. So right here, I'm doing the same thing, but I want it to be lighter than that bottom part that I just did of the roof. So I'm still gonna make it darker than the brown part, but lighter than the bottom part by adding just a little bit more white. So it's kind of a dark gray in a sense because it's like black and white. That's what I did to my brush in. And I'm going at an angle, okay? So it's um, parallel to that angle of the roof, uh, that side line that you drew, the angle of the roof. 
and that's the direction of the stroke. It goes in that same angle. So the bard in the front went vertical and the roof is going diagonal with your strokes. Okay, so um, don't fret over shading if you can't get that part bottom part to be perfectly black and then the top part to be lighter than the black part and um, because we're gonna it's gonna be a very subtle thing at the very end because we'll be adding a little bit more detail to that roof later okay so now what we need to do is we need our 12 flat brush and we need a nice fresh glop of titanium white so that's what I'm adding to my palette is titanium white and we want to get that 12 flat brush cleaned off and dry um, we want it pretty dry so I'm gonna um, get it dry using my paper towel here and I'm gonna form the kind of a point with my finger to get it nice and um, straight and pointy so I'm gonna dip that very tip of the brush okay in the titanium white and I'm going to use the brush um, just the tip of the brush to form a thin line so what I'm doing is I'm painting these thin dry lines and they're not really going all the way from the bottom to the top they're kind of um, well the, the paint is running dry as I'm painting the stroke they're vertical as vertical as possible and I'm just painting them pretty close together. They don't have to be the same distance from each other. They can be, in fact, it looks kind of, it makes it look more rustic when they're kind of uneven. And over here on the right, it got kind of sloppy. Like you can see how the lines start to go diagonal there on the right. But um, that is that you don't need it to be perfectly straight at perfectly straight vertical and you don't need them to be spaced apart perfectly. So just lightly brush in these white lines. Don't add too much white to your brush. So keep it dry and light and feathery and just very subtle in some areas and maybe it shows up better in others. Next, I'm doing the roof and this time, so I'm doing the same thing, but they're going at that angle of the roof and the, they're going at a diagonal angle on this roof as well. And if you find that you use too much white, you could always go back with just a little bit more black and just add just a touch of black in that roof. Okay, so I know that went super fast and I'm so sorry it's going so fast, but please press pause um, as you need to catch up. And what I am doing here is I'm outlining the roof parts again with just the black. So I the lines of the roof that define the roof line, I outlined it with black using the tip of my brush. Okay, and right now, right here, what I'm doing is the window. So I added a little bit of water in my um, brush and added that little bit of water, swirled it into the black to kind of make it flow a little bit better. And I'm painting in that window, that um, rectangle window, with solid black. Okay and it will stand out very nicely because this is solid black there's no brown in that black so it'll make it look like that window is kind of receding in the background going in the um, barn gives it some nice contrast okay so i'm filling that in solid black want to get a good coat or two on there to make sure it's nice and solid and dark okay so next we're gonna do the flag and we need to rinse our water out because we do not want muddy water for this flag we want these colors to be nice and bright and um, pure colors so we need the color primary blue and um, we're gonna start with just the primary blue right now. So with the 12 flat, I'm gonna do the, um, the blue part of the flag. So I'm painting that in and you should see the area that was drawn with your traceable. So that trying, triangle, <laughs> rectangle area is solid blue and you're filling that in, a good solid two coats of that 
um, blue and I'm doing horizontal strokes and the very end you, or after I'm done doing this I'm ended up making them go vertical so it doesn't really matter if they're going horizontal or vertical I think it maybe slightly looks better if the strokes are going vertical just to kind of keep it in union with the other strokes that are all going vertical everywhere else on the barn so that's kind of the thing here so I'm filling that in with the primary blue and the um, this blue's a tad bit translucent so it needs a couple coats to make it nice and solid and opaque okay so I'm getting my strokes to go vertical now and then we're gonna do alizarin crimson on the palette but we're gonna start with titanium white actually i'm gonna use a number four round brush to paint the stripes first and i'm gonna paint the white stripes first um i always find it easy when doing the american flag painting to do the white stripes first because um you'll you'll kind of see why so the second stripe is white, so I started on the second stripe and I did that white. So um, every other stripe is painted white. And this gives you kind of a little bit of a flexibility here because you can, you're using the round brush and you can, you can kind of go outside the lines here. You don't have to be um, very rigid and precise here and you can uh, go outside the lines and this is okay because then when we do the right red stripes it'll kind of um, make up for the fact that you went outside the lines that's why i did the white first instead of the red okay so the um the second to last stripe is white okay so we started on the second stripe and we ended to at the second to the last stripe And then, so this is just the round brush, adding a good um, two coats to these stripes. And um, then it's hard to see because it's white on white, but it's still necessary to paint it white. Okay, so I'm gonna rinse my brush off all the way and I'm actually gonna do this black line here next. So I'm gonna paint this in. So that's the uh, what the flag is hanging on. So I'm painting that, it's a, a curved line. Okay, and then, so I'm gonna rinse that black off the brush and then I'm gonna grab the Alizarin and Crimson. So I'm gonna start with the first stripe and paint it red. And so now you want to be a little bit more of a steady hand here with these stripes because we we got to um, go outside the lines a little bit with that white but now it's going to be noticeable if we go outside the lines. So you want to try the best you can. Of course it's a painting and um, my whole thing with paintings is it's okay to go outside the line because it makes it look like a painting and we're not going for realism here. We're not going for a photographic image. We're going for a painting and so that gives you a little bit of flexibility there. Um, so I'll zoom in here and show you what I'm doing. I'm doing the Alizarin Crimson, which is a really pretty red for this flag. And I'm doing the lines, so every other stripe. And so if your white is not dry and the red kind of runs into that white a little bit, that's okay because um, if that white blends in with the red a little bit because it goes over it, it kind of gives it some color variation in that red. So that actually works in our favor if that happens. Okay, and they're also not um, perfectly spaced apart and not at all the same width. I mean, they slightly varied, um, but like I was mentioning earlier, it's a painting and it doesn't have to be exact photorealism here. And I don't think the traceable, I did try to do, do the lines as close as possible. Um, as far as the same width apart when I did the traceable drawing um, but doing the painting is a whole different ballgame because you're um, 
painting, your strokes are going to kind of be different when you paint. So the width of the stripes might be skinnier or um, wider depending on the way you're doing your stroke. Okay, so I'm being as careful as possible to get this red line to be as vertical as possible and getting it to be solid and um, try not to run that red into that black there but it's okay if the red runs into the white a little bit and then the last stripe is red so if you did this right you should end up with the last stripe red so seven red stripes and six white stripes. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of make this one stripe here just a little bit thicker because that one's probably the thinnest stripe and I wanna kind of fix that there so you can see how easy because the white if it goes over the white it's not going to make much of a difference okay so we have our flag and for um, the bottom part right here I'm got my 12 flat back and I'm gonna make this area just a tad darker and um, gives it a little bit of a shadow underneath that flag right there so it's just a tad bit darker I triple loaded in the brown the white and the black but just a little bit more black and it also kind of um, fixes if you went outside the lines on the bottom part it kind of um, fixes that possibility too okay so for the stars I did titanium white and a number four round brush and I did not count 50 stars for this if you want to count 50 stars you can most cer certainly do that um but i didn't i don't i didn't even i don't even know you can count how many stars i'm doing but i did not count so but the stars are going in a sort of staggered um formation where they're like the brickwork they're staggered they're kind of going crisscross formation um but you don't have to do it that way if you want to kind of make it um just putting dots all over that area without making them geometrically spaced apart or anything like that. You can do that too. Um, if you want to splatter your stars, you can do that. And um, Okay, so there is the flag part of this painting. And I think what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of finding squeezing a few more in there okay so squeezing a few more sh um, stars in there next we're going to do the ground and this is light green gold it's uh, one of Liquitex Basics new colors and um, they just released a whole bunch of new colors and that's one of their new colors and I'm using a three quarter inch flat and I'm going to paint this whole bottom area with the green gold color so that's going to be the base color of the ground so I'm painting that in with the three quarter flat I'm going left and right horizontally with the that flat brush trying to um, go around the sunflowers so I'm not going to paint over the sunflowers I'm just going to go around them and use the tip of my brush to kind of go around those petals and then of course um, paint the sides of your canvas as well okay and then I'm going to do the sunflowers Okay, so the colors you're gonna need for the sunflowers are cadmium yellow deep hue, and you're going to need burnt sienna. 
You'll also need primary yellow, but I did not load that on my palette yet. I'm going to start, I'm going to use a number four round for all of the sunflowers. So I'm taking all my brushes out of my water and setting them to the side. And I'm grabbing my number four round brush and I'm going to use, I'm going to dip it in both of those colors. So I basically essentially mix burnt sienna with cad yellow deep and it's going to make this kind of golden yellow color and when I mix colors on my palette I don't usually um, mix them all the way so I like the color variation you can see on my palette um, the in-between color is kind of a swirled version of those two colors so I'm painting every other petal right now with the round brush and that's what I'm doing so every other petal these are going to be the darker kind of behind petals and I'm painting them in the direction of the petals so my strokes are going curved and then I'm going to do that with the other sunflower as well and so when I load my brush back in the you can see how the colors vary. It's not all the same color as I'm add, painting each of the petals. It's not um, because I, when I load my brush, reload my brush, I might be grabbing a different amount of burnt sienna or cad yellow deep. And that's what happens. Okay, so next I'm gonna load my palette with primary yellow and I'm going to paint the other petals and I'm not going to rinse my brush off actually no I am going to rinse my brush off I think in the directions of this tutorial I told you to not rinse your brush off actually um, either way is fine um, and you'll see in a second what I do and so I rinse my brush off and I patted it dry with a paper towel and I'm going to load with the primary yellow and I'm going to paint the other petals with primary yellow. So the thing with this primary yellow is it's a very translucent color. And if you're noticing that it's not painting over some of the barn area because it's overlapping the barn area and you painted brown in your petals, um, grab some titanium white and paint that along with your primary yellow and it'll get it to be more opaque okay and so I'm actually loading my brush in the cad yellow burnt sienna combo on my palette and I'm loading it in the primary yellow as well to get some color variation so I don't want my flowers to look like a pinwheel so where it's like dark light dark light with the petals but I still want the color variation so um, that's what I'm doing to get in getting them to be a little bit look more a little more natural Okay So I'm filling in those petals and then I'm gonna rinse my brush off here Pat it dry And I'm actually gonna grab some titanium white I'm going to add a little bit of texture to these petals. Okay, so I'm just adding um, these white lines on the petals and the white is blending in with the yellows and making it look a little bit like texture. So this is not, um, not going for realistic sunflowers at all here. Um, just an impression of a sunflower because they're not the main focus of this painting. The barn and the flag are the main focus. These, these are just kind of accents. So we don't have to um, spend a lot of time making them look realistic here. Okay, so for the circle, I'm loading my four round brush in black and a um, little bit of burnt sienna to make it a very dark brown color. So I did the black and then I loaded some burnt sienna on my palette there. So I'm just kind of forming a circle with my brush right in the middle and the circle will overlap some of the flower petals. Okay. And then to add a little bit of texture to those circles. 
I'm actually going to grab a little bit of white on my brush. So I'm going to rinse my brush off and dry it. Okay. And with the white, I'm just going to do these little dots forming this kind of circle thing. But then I ended up just doing the dots and kind of um, blending it all in. So the brown, black of the circle is not dry yet. The little white dots are blending with that color to kind of make a, a sort of grayish looking color. So I'm just doing dots on that area to create texture on the center part of the sunflower. And then there is a subtle stem under these two sunflowers and you'll see me do that here in just a second. I am going to load my palette. I'm doing that right now. I'm loading my palette with hooker screen. And I'm going to get my round brush, my number four, and I'm gonna load it in black in hooker's green to make a very dark green. So I loaded in both those colors. I'm going to just do a very subtle stem right there under the flowers. So th these two lines that are going under the canvas, go going off the canvas to, and that's the stem of the sunflower. Okay, so then I'm gonna continue on with this brush and those colors, um, actually with the hooker's green. So if there's too much black on your brush, I recommend rinsing it off or wiping it off with the paper towel. Um, but we're gonna do the blades of the grass and with the hooker's green, and I'm doing, um, with the round brush, I'm doing these strokes, and I'm just dragging each stroke from the bottom up, and they're going, I'm creating texture in the, in the grass, so they're going in all different directions. They're going vertical, diagonal, both directions, um, anything but her horizontal. But I'm working in horizontal rows here. So I'm adding these short little strokes of the grass, and as I'm working my way down, so they're gonna overlap each other, okay? And I'm working in rows. And also, to get color variation in your grass, you can dip your brush in um, a little bit of the burnt sienna or the yellow or even the green gold. And you can just kind of reload your brush in various um, variations of those colors to get variations in the grass so it's not all solid the same color. So actually what you see me do here is add another coat to the petals of the flowers. So I took a slight detour from the grass but that was bothering me that some of that brown of the barn was still showing through. So I'm going back to the grass and I'm applying the strokes and rows again and working my way to the bottom. So you don't have to think too hard about this step. You don't have to worry about the grass blade being taller on the bottom or darker or anything like that. So um, just fill it in with these texture lines of the grass. And then occasionally I go back up and add a few more colors in there in the middle area. And then I want the texture of the grass to kind of um, overlap the bottom part of the barn a little bit too. Okay, and then you can paint the bottom part of the canvas as well, the side part on the bottom. Okay, so next we have these two sunflowers that are growing on the right side of the barn. And I am going to load my brush in the black and the hooker's green. And I'm gonna get um, a nice little point on my brush. So I kind of twisted my brush as I loaded that paint to get a nice little point. And I'm gonna paint a wavy line 
left, I'm going to paint two stems for these sunflowers using just the tip of my brush. I'm using that round brush still. And then I'm going to paint the leaves. So I'm just going to kind of paint them in and um, paint them in solid. So draw the leaf and then paint them in. So this is Hooker's Green and Black so that it's a very dark green color. And let's see, we'll do another leaf on this side so it's not exactly um, the same amount of leaves on both of them. And then the little stem that attaches the leaf to the um, stalk of the sunflower. So I'm going to rinse my brush all the way, get all that green and black off of it, and I'm going to um, actually do the middle part first. So I'm using my finger for this step. Um, because it's kind of fun. So dip my finger in the black and the burnt sienna and I'm just dotting it down to create the center part of the sunflower. Just use my index finger for that. And then I'm going to go back to my four round brush and paint the petals. And so I'm going to use primary yellow for this and maybe grab a little bit of the cad deep of course that cad deep has a little bit of that um, burnt sienna still in it and um, titanium white too so uh, what is that quadruple load there uh, but the titanium white actually makes the petals look a little brighter here so these petals are a little lighter than the ones in the foreground um, you can do the same or you can do it differently but the main point of the adding the white is to get that yellow to be more opaque because it's covering that blue we don't want that blue to show through and if we have a petal overlapping the brown it makes it opaque so it covers the brown okay and so I'm just casually painting these petals and remember it's not the main focus of the painting so we don't really need them to be realistic or anything like that detailed and then um, I also did the texture thing on the inside of the brown parts the circles So I just add the, the white to the tip of my brush and you'll see me do that here in just a second. I'm just adding a few coats to the petals, get them to be nice and solid. And then with the um, tip of my brush, I'll just do little tiny white dots to give um, just a bit of texture on those circles. Okay, so we have the um, majority of the, pa the painting finish. And um, I'm gonna demonstrate how I did these clouds. I saved this step for the very last and they are optional because clouds are a, a bit of a trickery to do. So I'm gonna show you how I do these dry brush clouds. And i um, been doing a lot of these dry brush clouds lately. So I'm using a number eight round brush and I dipped it in white and you saw me wipe it off with the paper towel and so when I make these marks on the canvas the paint is not um, flowy it's dry and I'm painting in a counterclockwise little tiny counterclockwise circles and this is a cumulus cloud so it's fluffy at the top and sort of horizontal on the bottom and I am doing painting um, in little circles to form that cloud and you can control the lightness and um, transparency with the dry brush by um, wiping it off but um, adding a little bit more paint to it to brighter areas so the left part of this cloud is a little brighter so I'm adding a little bit more white and you can see what's happening here um, the white is a little brighter on the left because I added just a tad bit more white and um, the rest of it is dry and feathery because um, I wiped off a lot of white off of my brush so um, I'm basically kind of pushing the paint around here and you can I'm not loading it with a lot of paint I'm just using the dry brush to kind of um, 
make it feathery and blended okay so I'm going to add a little bit more white over here on the left so I dipped it in the white and wiped it off with the paper towel and so I'm doing the little the circular strokes over on the left and just kind of blending it in and on the right part of the cloud is a little bit more transparent okay so dipped it in the white and I'm going to do another cloud over here. So counterclockwise strokes, fluffy part on the top. Okay, and blend it over on the right side. The right side's a little bit more translucent on the cloud. Imagine the sun hitting the left part of the cloud. That's why it's bright. And then adding another layer of white. So a little bit more whiter on the left part by adding a little bit more white to my brush but still keeping it dry, still painting in circular strokes. The bottom part of the cloud is a little bit more horizontal and I'm pushing the paint around to get it to blend and still going in circular strokes, mostly counterclockwise, occasionally going clockwise and kind of brushing it left and right, um, fading the, the horizontal part that kind of fades back into the sky. And then maybe I'll go back in and I can add um, in a brighter part of the left part of this cloud. So that's what I did there. So that is how I do dry brush clouds. And this painting tutorial has come to its conclusion. I hope that you enjoyed painting the old American barn with me. Thank you for watching.